All right. So uh, we're going to have a class for about an hour today, maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, we're going to start working towards the project that I had mentioned uh, last week in last week's class. So hopefully you did the assignment that's due today. I'll get it down. I'll get you some feedback videos tomorrow. I'm in a much more comfortable workspace here. It sounds better. Uh, my room sounds good. <laughs> and I've got access to all my technology. <laughs> so anyway, um, we got a, a foot of snow dumped on us here. I'm just 70 miles north of the city. It was a rude awakening after 10 weeks on the beach. All right, let's uh, switch here and go here. So what we're going to be doing what you're going to be doing is you're going to be creating sort of like a multimedia project. And what I want you to do, and I sort of mentioned this a little bit last week, is I want you to go around and think about like a, an event, some sort of story. It doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be too thought out. But think about what, what you could do in an afternoon that you could document. And then you could take images with your phone. You could take some videos with your phone. How you could document all these things. And then we'll create sort of like a montage. And then you'll write some music to it. Now this is going to take us you know, quite a while. It's March 14th. It's going to take us into April to finish this. All right. So we're going to do it step by step. And uh, yeah, we're going to do it step by step. So let's take a look at a few things. So I've got here, I showed you some of this last week, right? I've got these wetlands assets. And then um, I also have some photos that I took from around where I live, you know, things like this. Now, your photos are not going to look this good. That's not the issue. That's not the point, right? The point is to tell a story and you got to start somewhere. So let me just move forward here to, uh, to photos, the Apple app. Now, I mentioned in an email to you guys that the music library has a Mac lab in the basement. You can get it. I guess it's an iMac probably. And that has photos and iMovie in it. And that's, you're going to be working. You're going to be working with that. All right. If you don't have a, an Apple computer, because I'm not sure Windows uh, I'm not sure what apps you can use for that to do some of the things that we're going to do. If you have alternate alternatives, be, you know, no problem. However you get it done, you get it done. All right. So now the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to capture all of your assets and you're going to get them into your computer. You can either email them to yourself um, if you have an iPhone and you have a Mac, you can do AirDrop. But you need to get them into your computer somehow, whatever way you know best to do that. And then you'll go through them all, and you are going to label them with a very simple description. Just a couple of words. doesn't have to be great detail. Something so that you know when you look at that descriptor, you'll know what it is. So two trees winter are... are. So I know that that should be R T two two R, oh R two R. There's the, at the end of winter. So that's River to Ridge. That's the trail around here. So these are two trees. Uh, this is probably 1921. I mean 2021. I'm sorry. Uh, right. There's a barn. I did some tweakage to it. Here's the barn. Full bar, same photo. Cornfield. That's the mountains, cloudy day. It's a bird up on those mountains. That's a misty morning. Same. And that, that's this, the mountains at sunset. That's 
the moon over. This is called Sky Top. This is the main street in my village. One morning, I got up very early. This is like at about 5.30 in the morning, and I set up my camera on a little tripod, a uh, little tabletop tripod, and I did a long exposure as cars. That's like about two seconds exposure, right? So you don't see the ca uh, cars. Well, this is the parked car, but the traveling cars you don't really see. You just see the streak of light, and that's another one. Now, the red, the red lights means that the car is going away from you because you're seeing the tail lights. Right, and that's nobody coming, the same scene. Right, and more of these same stuff, right? Okay, and that's very early one morning from a different vantage point, and that's at night. That's a fake photo. Like, this part is real, but I replaced the background with a, a star, but you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. This is um, a, a, a historic graveyard in the village one morning. Right, so you see, I've got all these things, right? So you, I'm, I'm going to show you on the wetlands assets what to do, but we're, let's, I've got them in iPhotos right now. And they just came in randomly, right? Now, once you get them into this, into this right, you'll create an album, you'll name it. You, you can just, whoops. Rename album. You can rename it whatever you want. If you right-click on that. And then you could start playing around with the order. Now, these photos here on the top four, they don't really fit in with the rest because they were done in the winter. Right? So I'm not sure I'm going to use them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them. So I'll click on the first one and then hold shift and click on the second one. Just like in Pro Tools, when you hold Shift and you click, it selects a bunch of things. And I'm going to move that all the way down. So that's the, at the very end. All right. So let's talk about this, right? So this doesn't really fit either. That's a, I love that photo, but that doesn't fit either. So let's move that over here. So that's, that's out of the way. All right. So that leaves us with these photos here. So let's let's move these around. So this actually happened earlier during the day, right? So that's the earliest thing. So let's I'm just clicking and dragging it up. These two can go also cuz that's very early in the morning, right? So I've got these three photos here. I know that this was uh later on that morning up at uh, it's called mini waska, so I'll just drag these. I'm just going to make a just a, a rough order, right? This is also in the morning. Now, these are different because this one might work, but these are very bright. I'm not sure they'll work, but these will definitely work, these two. So let's see if I put the black one here and the color one here. Okay, so now this is cloudy, and this one is cloudy. Let's say this is in the afternoon. This is sun getting towards sunset. This is sunset. And then this might be late at night. And we, I don't know if I'm going to put this up there, but that's another possibility. So we've got, out of all those photos, this is, this is how many we have, right? Now, we put them in an order, and I want to see how they play. So it's very easy to do. You could just do one of two things. You could play up here on the top. Play memory video or slideshow. So, now, you hear some music playing. That's a piece I wrote. If you have a piece of music that you wrote somewhere that you can access, you can get it. But they'll, they'll have music for you. And these are just different...
kinds of unfolding. I like the Ken Burns because it puts motion in the still photos. And we'll, we'll learn how to do that. So now we can just watch and see how this works. This is just rough, right? Very rough. And these are all unfolding way too fast, right? Okay, so the way I'm feeling about it is that th this one here, this one here should be the third one. Everything else seems to be fine. So what you'll do is you can do, you'll, you'll do one of several things. But the first thing we need to do is, is just, I'm just showing you how to rough this out. But you want to gather these things in one spot that's easy to access. So I'm clicking on the first one. And then I'm clicking on the second one. All right. And then I will do a command shift and the letter E, which is export. And if you can't remember that, you go up here, export 14 photos. And you'll do high quality or maximum, whatever you'd like, full size. And now you could, you, you could, what you could do nicely here is if you, let's see how this works. If you select sequential, file name, sequential. So let's see. So um, if I put zero, 01 like that, let me just see what happens, right? And then it'll ask you for a photo, like a place. So export. Now let's see. Okay, so um, the title got wrong. So let me re let me delete all these and let me redo that because I've never done that actually. But it's you can you you know you just try stuff. So Command Shift E. Um, so sequential prefix is NP. Gunks. I know what that is. The gunks are the mountains. NP is New Paltz. Export. Uh, yeah, let me do that one more time. Export. Now, if we go here uh, to this one here, you'll notice that they're numbered, right? That's the order. That's your rough order. Then you can import that into iMovie and create a movie from that. We'll go over that, but I want to show you a few other things in iPhoto first. All right, so I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to uh, create. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to take my wetlands photos, right? All my assets here. And again, I took those things and I named them all. And one thing I would say is to get more assets than you think you need, right? And capture a few, a few, a few short clips of movies. So for example, um, I have this, right? which I capture with my phone. We're going to get rid of the audio on that, right? Because there's people talking. My doofy friends I was with were talking while I was trying to capture audio. <laughs> right, so I am can capture... I, I might use some of these. I might not use some of these. I might use sections. But I've got some...
Right, I've also got some photos of uh, a gator. Big old gator video. Some cormorants. Okay, so I'm going to bring all these in. into my library, right? And then we're gonna select, uh, well, I don't want the new Paul's ones. So let's see, where does the birds start? That starts right here. Create, uh, add to a new album, right? So if you right click, in this field, add to a new album. And then I'll call this wetlands. All right, so here's all my wetlands assets, right? Now I've got this, this is my hand. That's weird looking, but we're trying to stop the wind from hitting on the microphone. I took a video because I can use that audio, right? So some of these, I have things where I'm blocking the, the camera with my hand because I just want to get some of that audio. And some of these other it bits, I might just use the audio from them uh, and not the video. But let's take a look at some of these. So let's say, for example, uh, let's do some editing of these, right? So let me pick a picture. Let's take this photo here. So if I right click on this, duplicate one photo, and then I'm gonna make three versions of this photo, right? So I just got these three. So the first one here, I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna edit. So if you go up to here, Whoops, I'm sorry. Go show edit tools. Right? Okay. So now this is the first one. Now this gives you a bunch of things that you can play around with. What I want to do is I want to make one that's in black and white, and then I'll slowly cross fade it into the full color one. So I can just drag, clip, click on the slider here. Wait, my image is in the way. Let me move myself out of the way. Right, I'll click on the slider here and I'll drag it to the left. And you see it becomes completely black and white as I drag it to the left. So you just have to go, see, right, as I, as I slide it, you'll see that um, these images here become too dark at some point, like right there. You can't see any of this. So you have to sort of fine-tune it so that you could see everything that you need to see, right? And so you're done with that. Now the next one, if you double-click on it, that's another way to get to the edit. Double-click on it and then... Uh, You can go to the edit tool here and then maybe just, you know, uh, let's see. So I, I'm going to reset. I don't like that. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to take the color and I'm going to make it a little less colorful. And that looks good. Done. And then to go back, up here there's a left-hand arrow and you can go back to the album. So now you see that we've got no color, a little bit of color, and full color. We'll be able to do cross dissolves like we can do cross fades in audio inside of the um, I, iMovie. Now, 
having a bunch of pictures of the same thing. I went over this last week, why that's really good. Because you could do quick cuts, right? So that, that's very helpful when you're taking photos. Like, for example, I've got these three pictures here. So that's, that's helpful. Now, it looks like I've got some... This one should actually be over here because it's the same beak. All right, so let me... Um, this one I'm going to remove. And I'm actually going to remove all the videos for right now. Like, I, I, I think that I don't... This one I already know is not good, so I'm going to remove it. That one is weird because it changes color. The, I must have done something. You know, part of that is okay. Let's, so I'm going to remove that from here. I have that in still in my master folder. What about this one here? Well, there's some cool bird stuff there. I might use that. All right. So this one is nice, but it's too it's too dark in this area. So um, can I edit a movie here? Yes, I can. So I'm taking the light slider and I'm dragging it to the right. And then maybe I'll add just a little bit more color. And that looks pretty good. Now, the other thing you can do is you can add filters, right? So that's up, up here. So if I want to make something noir, monotone, you can make something look like it's old school, like it's regular film. And then you can go back to the original. So you can play around with all that stuff. And then you can also crop, right? Which I'm not going to do to this, but we may, I'll, I'll crop a, a, a um, I'll crop a, a photo. So let's take a look at this one. I like the video, but there's not much happening there, right? So, um, all right. So let's let me put these in a in a rough order, right? So I'm going to take this morning on the morning on the beach. I might put my dog in there. I like this, but it's really long. So I'm going to save, I'm going to take all the videos and move them out of the way for right now. Okay, so all my videos are out of the way. Except for this one. All right, great. So we've got morning. So I know that the first thing I saw were these white birds here, so that's good. 
So maybe we'll have the white birds in the sky and then they end up right here. And then this is another shot of those white birds with the image flipped upside down. And then here they're flying away. They're, I think they're called wood storks. Here's some more wood storks. So this is a um, red-winged blackbird, these four photos. And then, let's see, this is, should be afterwards. Right, so these are all these birds that I saw on this fence post. So we'll get those. And then these are cormorants, so maybe we'll, we'll show the cormorant this way. First... Something like that, where you see the beak moving. And then on the fence post, I don't like that one. It's out of sequence, so I'm going to delete it. And then we'll end here. All right? So let's play. Now, let's try that with a memory video. We'll play that and see what it looks like. So they added the music for this. And you can just see the flow, whether you like it or not. Oh, that's a video. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that second one. Now, these are going by way too fast, right? You'd need 150 of these shots to do a three or four minute piece of music. So we're good. So I kind of like that order. I think that that's really good. So I'm going to, I've selected all these. Oh, this one I'm going to get rid of. I think also I'm going to put this one here. Now let's try this. Uh, I want to try, watch that beginning again. I've just reordered things a little bit. Yeah, I like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to edit this one. And I'm going to make that like really dark black and white. All right. So we'll just go through the first few and play the video. I kind of like this, right? So I'm going to select the photos that I want to export. And then I will do a command shift E. And this will be wetlands. Movie quality. Ah, make your movie quality the highest. Right, here's another one. So videos, movie quality. You can select that in your phone. You need to look in the settings. I made that. That's a 4K video, so I'm going to export it at 4K. 
but do the highest quality that you've recorded your video at, whatever your phone captures it at. And then I'm going to make a new, new folder. Call this Wetland Sequential. I only had seven photos. Oh, so, right. So what happens is that if you're going to export a movie, it takes longer to export it, and then it'll take a second for everything. And notice I've got a export complete prompt up here. Great. Now, before I go anywhere, I want to take a look at some of those videos that I was looking at to see if I could do any color correction here because it's very easy, right? This one, I'm not. I did this in the, I played around with this in the phone. I'm going to leave this the way it is. But let me take a look at this one here. Let me edit the gator. I'm going to, so do you see how, if I leave this here, right, this is reflecting the color of the sky and it's very drab. I want that to be a little bit richer. So if I move this to the right, the slide, do you see how that's changing the color? And I can make it a little less bright. And that, that works out really well, I think. So let me export that. I'm going to call this uh, Gator. And that's going to go to the same folder. There's another Gator. I like that. I'm not going to even change that. So I'll. I like this because I can use the I can use the sound of the waves in the other. Uh, other video in the other fi films. So I don't I don't think I need to edit this. Let me see. Let me turn the light down a little. Ooh, that looks much juicier, right? Maybe you don't want to saturate the colors too much because they're pretty saturated as it is. But see, if I make it just a little bit less bright, it really looks nicer. Okay, that's great. So I'm going to export that. Uh, sunrise. Beach. You know, I like this, but I think this is this is going to be more than enough. Okay. Great. So I can quit this. Now, you'll have your folder here, right? You'll need to have your Dropbox account or your school... Um, or your school one OneDrive, and what you would do is, let's say you're using the school OneDrive, you'll have to make a new folder, and I'll call this Wetlands Assets, and you cannot, you'll open this up, you can't just drag this folder in. This This is a really weakness of this OneDrive. You have to open this up, select all of these and drag them all 
into that folder and then they will upload. You'll see this right here. And if you click I, it gives you. So if you click pro that, it'll give you progress, right? So that's uploading there and you can get it. Um, I'm going to close this for now. And if I go to, uh, if I go to my personal Dropbox, which you get two gigabytes free with a Dropbox, I can just take this whole folder and drag it here and it will upload it. And that you get this way, you'll get it off of the school computer and then you can download it again when you need to. All right, and you're creating a backup as well. All right, let me close this. We don't need this. So I've got my wetlands sequential. That's great. So next thing I want to do is I want to think about what, what kind of a tempo I want for this piece, right? So we're going to go to Pro Tools. And I'm going to click on the metronome here, and I'm going to set it so that it will click during play and record. Give me one second. Okay. So, now, here's the thing about a tempo. That sounds really fast, right? For, for like a nature video, you might want that to unfold slower. So, but, you know, you could play a piece of music that's like this. Right? Or... But you could also do right. So my tempo is at 120 beats a minute, but I'm feeling those as eighth notes, the clicks. So it gives you kind of like um, options, right? So you need to just figure out what will work for you best, you know, what kind of piece. So if you're doing a cityscape with uh, traffic and people and subways and stuff, or you go down to Union Square and you're capturing the craziness that goes on there, you might want a, a, a different pacing than you would if you were in the Queens Botanical Gardens on Main Street, you know, and you're taking beautiful flower shots, right? Okay, so I'm going to stick with, I'm going to make this just a little bit slower. So it's at 120. I'm going to make it at 100, and that's going to be too fast, I think, but I'll feel it like if I... Really? Really? Oh, give me a break. Oh, I know why it didn't work. Somehow the output got changed. I like that better, right? And then if I want to do something like with the alligator or something. I can get a little pace or, you know. Danger, whatever, whatever. You, you, you can have a little pacing or when the bird, if the birds are flying, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you can have multiple options. So for me, 
this pay, this tempo of 100 will work really well. So I want to get that click track as audio. So what I'm going to do is the click track is a mono in, uh, augs track with a click, click plugin inserted into it. So what I'm going to do is command shift N and have one new mono audio track. And I'm going to call this click print, All right? I'm printing the audio. Now I'm going to set the output of the click to bus one and the input of the click print to bus one. So the output of the click track is going to the input of the print track. So if I play uh, this now, you'll see that the meter will move, but you won't hear any sound, right? You won't hear any sound. If I click record and play, you won't hear any sound either. You'll hear sound if you start recording, but if you want to monitor it, there's a little eye here. That's called input monitor. Let me move this so that you can see this and zoom way in. Right here, that's the input monitor. So if I click on that and that becomes green, now when I hit the space bar, right, you hear that. So let me just start recording. So I'm going to do a uh, command space bar. And then you wait. <laughs> now, if you don't want to wait, Let's say I'll do eight bars, right? You can do use your audio editing skills. Okay, so I did a little bit more than eight bars, so I'm going to go to grid. I'm going to click, boom, and now I've got an eight bar click. So if I do command and the letter D, I can duplicate that multiple times. Or if I do option and the letter R, I can get repeat comes up. And then I could, let's say I do uh, 20, let me make an even number, 21 repeats. And that's seven minutes long. So that's way more time than we need, but that's okay. All right, so how do you get this out, right? There's a couple of ways of doing it. I'm going to show you uh, two different ways. The first thing you need to do is to make this one contiguous audio file instead of 22 separate clips. So if you click on the first one, double click on the first one, hold the shift key down, double click on the last one, all of them are selected, right? You can do consolidate. I've shown you that uh, in some of your private videos with MIDI clips in Audio MIDI 1, how to fix when you've unnamed it. A quick way to fix it, there's another way where you right click and you can rename the clip, but that's a quick way to fix it. So you can do the same thing here. So I do option, shift, and the number three. You now have one contiguous print, a click. It's called click print with zero two after it. That's fine. So then what you can do is option, uh, shift, and no, it's uh, command, shift, and the letter K. And this brings up the export selected. So you're going to export it to this format is fine. And you're going to choose where you want that to go. And you're going to go to your wetlands sequential, open. And if you export it, boom, it's done. It's right in that folder. So let's go to that folder. Uh, and we got our click print. All right, so do you want me to go over that again? Any questions on how to render the click and how to get it out of Pro Tools? No, you guys are all spellbound. <laughs> all right, now let me show you another way that you can do this. So this is back now to just everything being selected, selected as a separate uh, clip. Make sure that there's nothing. Let me turn all this stuff off here. Make sure you can solo this. It's the only one playing and the only one audible. And then if you do, 
Option, Command, and the letter B, you get Bounce Mix. And then you have to name this. So I could call this Wetlands. Let's say I'll call this Wetlands Click. Make sure it's offline. And then I'm going to choose the directory for this. Go to Desktop and Wetlands Assets. Open. And then Bounce. And now this is... Uh, Oh, it's in the assets. I put it in the wrong one. Okay, so let me get this out onto my desktop. We want that into the sequential. And here it is. So here we got our click. So we've got two versions of the same click. Great. Now, make sure that you, uh, when you've, When you've moved where you're bouncing something to, make sure you go back to do a bounce and make sure you reset it to your session folder. All right? Instead of choosing a directory to your session folder, bounced files, and then cancel out on that. That's actually kind of important to do. Otherwise, it'll sometimes, when you open up another session, it'll send it to that, that, that one file there, that one folder there, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to quit Pro Tools. I'll just move it out of the way. Okay, so give me one second, I'm going to sneeze. Guess not, false alarm. Okay, so now I'll go and open iMovie. And I'm going to do a, a new project, a new movie. All right. And uh, you're going to import media. Now, it's important to remember this step. iMovie is a little messed up. You can't choose what the output is so easily. So the best thing to do is to take the highest resolution bit, and that's the 4K video. So the 4K video was this wetlands. And the way you could tell is if you do highlight it, do Command I, the inf info for that will come up. And if you look right here, you see that it says 384 by 2160, right? 3,804. That's, that's uh, 4K dimensions. Drag that in first. Really? Oh. Ugh. It always does this. I don't use uh, iMovie as often as I use DaVinci Resolve. So make sure that you, you're right here, your project media, you select for the project you're in. All right, so now you'll be able to, if you want to render this, you'll be able to export fo f the file and it'll come up at 4K. But we'll get to that later. So I've got that in there. And I can just delete this off the timeline now. I don't need that. And let's just get all of these assets in here. Uh, so I'll do one through seven. Uh, one through six, we'll get these in here. And notice they come up in order. That is very helpful. So I'm going to skip this. And we, I just know that that comes after that. But I'm going to go to eight. And go all the way down to the bottom. So you see that it's in order. And then I need the uh, other three films. Okay, great. So we've got our click track here. I'm going to drag the click track down here. And then you see how small that is down there? Just drag the slider and it will. Where did it 
it go? This is whack. All right, so I just had to drag that in again. So now you can see this right here. Make sure that it's all the way back at the beginning. And then it's just a very simple matter. Now you can resize these things just like in Pro Tools. And if you double click here, you can you know, change the size of the, click, the clip here. Um, but now we can start adding our assets, right? So let's start with, let's start with this and just drag this in. Now there'll be a default length of four seconds. And that's too short. So what I'm gonna do is if you just hover over the border, it changes just like doing an audio file or, or, or editing something like that. And I'm gonna to try to make this about two bars long. So you see I'm eyeballing that. And then maybe the next one we'll do is we'll go to the dog and maybe she'll be two bars long as well. And then maybe we'll do this. Now, I'm going to, uh, now if you zoom in here, you see that they, this is the audio for this. I'm, I'm going to leave it in for now, but before you render this, you're going to turn this completely off by just clicking and dragging that down. And you can bring make it louder if you want as well. So I've got these in here. Now there needs to be some adjustments done. Why is that, you say? Let me get down in the bottom corner. Because this is our frame, and the film, the, the picture doesn't take up the entire frame. So you're going to have to do a little editing. So right here is a cropping tool. And you can crop to fill, and then that, does the crop for you and you can click and drag and move that around. You can make it smaller if you want and move that around. All right. And you can certainly un just use command Z to undo those, but then they've got this Ken Burns effect, which I think is really cool. So you've got a start point and an end point. So if I click and drag in, you'll see that there's a little plus in the middle here. So I've got, this is the center of the photo and it will zoom out. Okay, that's a little too fast, right? So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna adjust that by making, I'll make the start a little bit bigger. And it will fade in slow, slow more slowly. And then the dog, right? So we'll do the same thing with the dog. We'll, this time we'll start here and then we'll click here and then we'll make this about the same size as this one. And we'll go from left, actually let's do this. Let's go from, let's start with the sun and end with the pup. All right, so that's a little bit too, that's a little bit too fast, right? So I'll just make, I'll just drag these in so that there's less ground that has to cover. Great. Now, what about this transition? We, we're going to want to work on the transition. I'm going to show you one of the transitions, but I, I would say to wait until you get something that you like before you do the transitions 
because the transitions will change depending upon any edits that you make. But it's very easy to do a transition. So if you go up here, transitions, right? And you've got all of these options. And you could play around with them. And the way you do is just take it, drag it right to where the clips end uh, and meet. And then this says it's five seconds. That's too short. So let's say I make that three seconds. All right? So now... Now, if you've got a video clip that you want to get in there, you can't, you have to trim some of the beginning in order to do a fade, in order to do a cross fade. Let me turn the volume of that off because it's annoying to me. Cross dissolve, right? And I'll do the same thing. I'll, this time, maybe I'll make it two seconds long. Okay, so I want to go this that that amount of length, right? So what I'll do is highlight there, and if I right-click, I can split clip. And that makes it two clips, and then I can just delete that. So that's now... So there's a little motion in there. Do I, I, can, I can also, with, with a film clip, I can also do a Ken Burns... Right, and I can just just you know do it a little, a little bit, right? So let's say I start here. Let's say I start here, and it goes in just a little bit. All right, so you know, I'm just, we're going to keep going over this. We're going to go over this and we're going to go over this. But the first thing that you should be thinking about doing is making, um, thinking of some ideas, right? And that's what I'd like you to get done for next week is to type on a PDF. You could do it on your phone and email the PDF to yourself and then upload it. Um, an idea. And it shouldn't be more than two sentences. It needs to be very rough. Why, why is that? Well, if you plan out everything to the most intimate detail, you're not leaving yourself any room for happy accidents or for, for inspiration to happen, right? So when I took, take the, took the photos of the wetlands, I just was taking photos and I was thinking about like, wow, this is really cool. Let me take three or four photos of these wood storks. Let me take a few photos of this red winged blackbird. Let me take a few photos of the cormorant. Let me take some videos of the crocodile and let me get some natural sound uh, by recording a few things and gather all your assets. We went, we went over this uh, last semester, Claudia, where we talked about that you're a sculptor. Right. And what, what sometimes, you know, a sculptor gets a big piece of bronze and sort of fashions a shape out of it. Or if you're making a, a you're a potter and you put some clay on a wheel and the wheel is spinning around, you just got a lump of wet clay there and you're using your hands to shape it into a vase, a cup, what, whatever form that you want. If you are uh, another, like another kind of sculptor, you'll go around the junkyards and you'll gather unbelievable amounts of sometimes incredibly disparate and seemingly unconnected items. And you put them together, right? It's up to your creative vision. They're, they're thinking, well, maybe this will go with, you know, maybe this piece will be a nice contrast to something I captured, I picked up two weeks ago, but they're not putting together a really detailed story yet, right? So you gather your materials, you've got a loose outline, you go out, you gather your materials, you get them in the computer, and you get them into, into iPhotos, and then what we did here, when we put these into an order and played around with it, it's almost like what they call making a storyboard. Does anybody know what a storyboard is? Yay, nay?
A storyboard is a graphic organizer that consists of illustrations or images displayed in sequence or for the purpose of pre-visualizing a motion picture, animation, motion graphic, interactive media sequence. This was developed at Walt Disney Productions in the 1930s. And so, right, this is a storyboard, like an early storyboard. Notice how rough everything is, right, with just this, a sentence. Right, so this, this somehow is Roman, right, and it's a little bit more detailed. Right, so you could just see it's, it's, it's a rough outline, and that's what you're doing inside of iPhoto. You're making a rough outline. And then you're exporting that. And, you know, you may add, you may get through this and you may decide that you need more assets and you need a few more, uh, a few more shots. You need some, some other, some other audio, you, you, but you're, you're, you're just roughing things out at first and then you're getting more and more detailed with this and you're creating your video. All right. So, um. Again, we're going to go over this, right? This is going to take us five, four, five weeks to finish this project. And the thing, wh why we're doing this is multiple reasons. What, what I, I've mentioned this before is I'd like for you to think about music composition in terms of storytelling. And this is a good exercise. It's also a good exercise to teach yourself how to create music that's appropriate for moving images, which is another skill that I think is very important for people to at least have the firm understandings. And by putting together your own films with these, you know, these, these uh, photo montages or photo, whatever you want to call them, uh, photo essays, you can really start to get a sense of how a film is put together. And when you work with a, a director, you'll understand a little bit more what they do. And then on top of that, you're learning how to manipulate digital media, right? Pictures are digital media. And so you're learning how to do some editing. You're learning how to do uh, some work in changing the color, maybe some, some cropping, all these things. It, that's very similar to editing audio inside of Pro Tools or any DAW. So you're using this extra, um, like sort of external media and, or external art form to help enhance your music making. Anyway, I think it'll be a fun project and, you know, it'll be really kind of cool to see what kinds of stuff you guys come up with. So um, it's definitely going to be a challenge for some of you, but I think that you you all seem to be really, uh, all I know is that the stuff I saw with the poetry was very well done. I really liked a lot of it, especially since I don't, you probably never did anything like that before. Is that correct? Any of you ever set poetry to uh, animation? So, Claudia, you've done animation before? Or is that the word that I was looking for that I didn't see? 